Praise the Lord, everyone. Happy Mother's Day. What a blessing it is to be in the land of the living and to be able to be able to just see the sun and to enjoy our family. Amen. And to give God praise. So before I go any further, I just want to have a word of prayer. And um, I want to pray for... Our mothers today, I want to pray for those that are hurting today. Um, I want us to want us to touch and agree and pray for for the land. Amen. Pray for those that have a need. Amen. Amen. And pray for our strength as well. So let us pray. Father God, in the name of Jesus. God, we love you. We glorify you. Hallelujah. We thank you for your mercy. And God, we thank you for your grace. Lord, we thank you, God, for what you have done in our lives. God, we thank you, oh God, for how you have brought us this far. And Lord, we just want to say thank you. Hallelujah. Thank you, oh God, for bringing us over. Thank you, Lord Jesus, for allowing us to see a day that we never seen before. Thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for opening doors and making ways even in during this pandemic. God, we thank you. And God, I pray today, hallelujah, we pray today for the mothers on today, God. We pray for their strength. We pray, God, that you will continue to hold them, keep them higher, hallelujah. Oh God, keep them in good strength. Hallelujah. Keep them, oh God, in good health. In the name of Jesus. And God, we pray for the mothers. Hallelujah. We pray for the mothers that have lost, oh God, some loved ones in this season. Oh God, they may have lost children. They may have lost a child, a spouse, a sibling. But God, we ask you, God, to strengthen them even now. In the name of Jesus, Lord, put your arms around them. Minister to their heart. In the name of Jesus. And God, we pray, we pray, God, for those that have lost their mother in this pandemic. And even, oh God, those that, oh God, lost their mother even prior to this. But Lord, today, oh God, is a day where there's time, there's mixed emotions, oh God. But God, I ask you, Lord, to strengthen right now. For God, you said in your word, God, that you are our everlasting strength. And Lord, we believe your word. Hiya, hallelujah. Hey, God, we believe your word, God. We believe, God, that you are able, oh God, to minister to the heart, to strengthen the heart, oh God, in the name of Jesus. That even as they think about their mother, that they will have precious memories, uh, memories, oh God, hallelujah, that have impacted their lives, uh, mem memories, oh God, that they can embrace, oh God, and put their arms around today. God, we thank you. God, we glorify you. We thank you, oh God, for this, this country. We thank you, Lord, for what you are doing. But God, we thank you, Lord, for what you're about to do. We thank you, God, for revival hitting the land. We thank you, oh God, hallelujah, for healing, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we thank you, oh Lord, we thank you, God, for we as believers uh, coming to the place where you desire, coming to the place of, of, of prayer, coming to another level of, of consecration, uh, in the name of Jesus, oh God, we glorify you. Oh God, we give you praise. In the name of Jesus, we lift our hands to you, oh God. Oh God, we lift our hands to you, Jesus. You are worthy of the praise. You are worthy of the glory. We pray for every essential worker. We pray for those that are on the front of the line. 
In the name of Jesus. Oh God, we pray for them, God. We pray strength, oh God. We pray that their families are covered. We pray that they are covered. In the name of Jesus, we pray for our government. We pray for our governor. We pray, oh God, for our mayor. We pray for our president. We pray that you touch them, oh God. In the name of Jesus, oh God, we believe you, God. We believe your word. We believe believe, oh God, that you're able to do it, and we know that you're able, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, in Jesus' name, hallelujah, right where you're sitting, hallelujah, just lift your hands and worship him, God, we worship you, hey God, we worship you, Lord, for you are mighty, you are great, we don't understand everything, but God, we know that you are awesome, and there is none like you, there is none like you, hallelujah, glory be to God, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus, God, we give you praise, Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. I don't know about you, but there is a praise on the inside. There is a joy on the inside. Amen. Thank you, Lord. Amen. Just, just sing with me this, this, this song of praise. Just a, just, a, just a one verse. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. There is none like you. Hallelujah. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity, Lord, and find there is none like you. Hallelujah. There is none like you. Hallelujah. No one else can touch my heart like you do. I can search for all eternity. Mother's Day. FaceTime. Hallelujah. Because 
This is a Mother's Day that many of us will cry sometime and say, mm, I'm, I'm not going to the restaurant. No way. It's too crowded. I'd rather be home. Well, we're home today. We're home. And we're going to enjoy our homes. Amen? As I stated before, we may be shut in. Hallelujah. But we're not shut out. And it's amazing how today, probably for many of us, is a day, my God, we wish we could go out. My God, we almost can taste the restaurant. But hold on, people of God, because sooner or later, amen, the Lord is going to bring us out. But in the meantime, we want to remain careful. We want to remain safe. But what I want to say to the mothers is that for many mothers today, it's very painful. For many individuals today, it's very painful. Some of you have lost your mother during this pandemic. And, you know, many mothers today have lost either a child or a spouse, a sibling. So I want to speak to strength, to your strength. You're holding on. You're still here. And that is a blessing. I know it's painful to lose a mother. I know what it feels like to lose a mother and not to have my mother with me here on Mother's Day. But I tell you, God is your strength. Grieving is a process and let it take its process. Let it go through the process. But just know, even in the midst of you going through day by day, God will strengthen you. God will hold you together. So I encourage the mothers today that have had lost someone during this pandemic. And then I encourage the individuals, male or female, that have lost their mother during this time. And you may have lost your mother even years prior, but the fact is, mother is not here. But think of the, the memories of your mom, uh, reminisce on some of the attributes of your mother and the impact that she made on your life. For you, who, you are who you are because of your mother. And thank God for mom. And I speak to the mothers. I speak to your strength. For you should be applauded for who you are. You are beautiful and you are definitely powerful. Oh, yes. Have you noticed a mother can walk in a room and change atmosphere? A mother can walk in a room where there's chaos and bring peace. Why? Because there's nobody, there's no one like mother. Mother has a special connection with her children that no one else has. For there is a different type of bond that the mother has that no one else has with her children. So we thank you, mothers, for making an impact. I want to say thank you, mothers, for standing in a gap for your children. Watch this. And so many others that you did not even bring into the world. I even speak to the mothers that may say, well, I, I'm not, I didn't bring any children in the world. But you have mothers so many. Because don't you know that what makes a mother is not just uh, bringing forth, amen, hallelujah, a child in the delivery room, but mother is one that is there for their child, that cares for their child, um, that be there to, to help develop their child. So mothers, you are important. So I speak increased strength to you today. 
Some of you are saying, what am I going to do? These children at home all these days. My God, I speak strength to you today. What a blessing it is for you to be able to look upon your children daily. Amen? And so, I want to say we appreciate you, mothers. We are grateful for you. And I want to show you two flowers. For mothers, you are as elegant and beautiful as this rose. A rose that was pretty much tighter than this before it began to open up. But I want to say to you mothers, it's not over. Everything that God has for you, everything that God wants you to blossom into, is still going to happen. Don't give up, don't quit. Your elegance, hallelujah, uh, your intelligence, your strength, hallelujah, is impactful. And so you are elegant as this rose, and you are just as beautiful and resourceful, right, as this sunflower. Oh, this is the sunflower seeds provide, amen, food. The sunflower seed. Uh, 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 there is uh, provides all, and there's an all, O I L, within you that you have used over the years over your children. You've been there when they were afraid. You were there when they said, "Mother, I don't think I, I I can finish this. I don't think I can pass the test." You were right there. So you are just as elegant and beautiful as this rose. And you are just as resourceful as this sunflower. Be encouraged. Be encouraged. God is working it out for you. God is on your side. God is standing by you. Amen. So if you're right there, right where you sit, all mothers, I just need you to lift your hands up and say, Lord, I thank you for who I am. I thank you, Lord, for who I am. I am wonderful. I am beautiful. I am powerful. Hallelujah. I am great. Thank you, Lord. And so today, just briefly, I'm not going to be before you long. Um, look with me in the book of Luke, the first chapter. Thank you, Lord. Amen. And we begin reading. Thank you, Lord. At the 30th verse. And the angel said unto her, Fear not, Mary, for thou hast found favor with God. And behold, thou shalt conceive in thy womb and bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. Hallelujah. Skip down to 34. Then said Mary unto the angel, How shall this be, seeing I know not a man? And the angel answered and said unto her, The Holy Ghost shall come upon thee, and the power of the highest shall overshadow thee. Therefore, also that holy thing which shall be born of thee shall be called the Son of God. And behold thy cousin Elizabeth, she hath also conceived a son in her old age. And this is a sixth month with her who was called barren. For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Amen. And the 45th verse. And blessed is she that believe. For there shall be a performance of those things which was told her from the Lord. Amen. I just want to encourage you today and let you know that impossible things do happen. I want to change that and say impossible things still happen. And we talked about uh, last Sunday, we talked about facing your giant 
Hallelujah. Well, I'm here to come back to you again and tell you impossible things still happen. And so today, we're going to look at two women. Amen. Uh, two women that had impossible situations. Hallelujah. And I feel a praise coming on because I believe there's someone listening to me right now. You're looking at me right now and you're saying, okay, God, how is this going to work out? But I'm here to tell you today, impossible things still mm -hmm, happen. So you see here how there was a couple, and I want to go back, well, I want to go back to Mary. Mary received a word that she shall bring forth, amen, our Lord and Savior, Jesus. She received a word, amen, how she will bring forth a son, and thou shalt call his name Jesus. But she also told that Prior, prior to that, she said, well, how could that be? How could that be? I have, I, I have never been with a man. And I am a virgin about to get married. How can that be? And the Lord spoke to her and says, it, it will be. It, it, it shall be done. Even your cousin that was a, a, a barren, hallelujah, she shall conceive as well. Hallelujah. And the Bible tells us how she received the word of God. So now we're looking here, and I want to focus on uh, Elizabeth for a minute. We're looking here at Elizabeth and her husband, Zachariah, and how they were a humble couple. They did not live in a, an elite area, but they lived in an area that was not as fancy, not as beautiful as other areas. And then it was a couple that was up in age. The husband was up in age as well as the wife. And the Bible says that they were devoted to the Lord and they were dedicated to the Lord. And their lives were pleasing to God. How many times have you said to God, God, my life is pleasing to you. And Lord, you know, I need this to happen. Or why haven't this happened? Why haven't I been able? So just imagine Elizabeth. She was not able to have a child like other women. For she was barren. Now back in those days, the, the priest will say that was disfavor of God, that uh, it was also grounds for divorce. But Zechariah, no, he did not abandon his wife. The Bible said instead of him running away, he prayed. Instead of him saying, okay, uh, God, you know, forget her, I'm going to leave her, she's an embarrassment. No, what he did was he prayed. Hallelujah. And the Bible says that there was a stigma connected to her not having a child, not being able to have a child. So can you imagine, uh, you know, you receiving a word right when you have given up, right when society said it can't be, right when uh, the other person on the other side of the table told you it can't be? Hallelujah. But the Bible says, that uh, her husband was committed to God. Hallelujah. And even though he knew his wife could not have a child, he kept praying, he kept on praying, and he kept on working. I'm here to tell you today, people of God, that there is nothing, mothers, and this even goes for, for, for the fathers and for all of you, there's nothing impossible for God to do. Nothing. Our God is the God of the impossible. Hallelujah. Let me just say this to you. He delights in doing impossible things for us. So I believe that this man of God, he believed the word. He prayed, he prayed, and 
And the Bible says that he did not bail out. Hallelujah. He did not stop praying. Amen. Glory be to God. But he kept on working. He kept on doing his priestly duties. Hallelujah. So here come the time where uh, Zechariah is in the, the temple. And he's doing his priestly duties. Let me tell you something, people of God. While you're waiting, and while you're uh, 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 waiting for God to move, you can't stop working. You can't, even in this pandemic, we cannot be on a seat doing nothing. But we got to continue because the impossible still happens. In other words, God sees your need. God sees what you desire. God sees the breakthrough, amen, that you need. And guess what? He has your breakthrough in mind. Oh, I like that. He has your breakthrough in mind. Glory be to God. I need somebody to, to type that on the comments and say, he has my breakthrough in mind. My God. He's always thinking about us. Hallelujah. So, so just know that when you are working, God is still working. When you are moving, God is still moving. So the Bible says that while he was doing his a uh, 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 priestly duties, the word of the Lord came. The word of the Lord came. And the Lord came to him and said, do not be afraid, Zacharias, for your petition has been heard and your wife Elizabeth will bear you a son and you will give his name John. Oh, there will be joy and gladness, and you shall rejoice at his birth. Hallelujah. Your child won't just be an ordinary, ordinary child, won't just be just a, you know, just a child, but your child, amen, will be the forerunner of the Messiah that was prophesied in the book of Malachi. Hallelujah. So here come a word. How many times has the Lord has given us a word and told us, you got the strength to uh, 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 bring the giant down. You have the strength, amen, to go through this valley. You have the strength, amen, and you're going to come out with victory. You're coming out with victory. How many times has the Lord given us that word? But then... All of a sudden, we begin to stop believing and we start seeing, or shall I say, what we see become magnified to the point where it almost, hallelujah, bothers our faith. It, it gets us to the place where we're not believing like we once did. And so the husband... Zacharias, he says, he came back and said, how shall I know this for certain? Can you believe that? He prayed. He never stopped praying. The angel of the Lord appeared to him, and he came back and said, how can this be? How can I be certain? I don't know about you, but I've been there. I've been there. I had a, I had a word from the Lord. Yes, yes, yes. The Lord spoke a word and was clear. Let me tell you something. You know, when God speaks, you know, he's clear and, and he's concise. Amen. And I heard the word of the Lord. And after hearing the word of the Lord, I began to believe that it was impossible. All of a sudden, maybe the circumstance became worse. Or maybe noise in my ear, somebody talking in my ear, telling me, I don't know. I don't know, you said that can be. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. And, and, and my faith became a little low. So the Bible said that his faith became a little weak. And he says, how shall I know this for certain? He said, for I am an old man. And my wife is advanced in years. Now, what he was saying didn't make sense. I mean, in a sense, you know, him being past that age and his wife past the barren age. So he was saying, come on. How can that be? So the Lord said, I show you a sign. I'm going to cause you to become silent. You will not be able to speak until the prophecy is fulfilled. Hallelujah. And I can imagine that wasn't pleasant for, uh, 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 you know, for him not to be able to talk. 
But but the Lord the Lord said, I'm gonna cause you to become mute. I'm here to tell you, saints of God, sometimes when, when, when you're waiting for that miracle that you know in the eyes of others, it seems impossible. Sometimes God will have you silent. Sometimes God will have you where you're not saying a word or you can't say a word until it's fulfilled. And so, so the Lord says to him, I'm going to cause you to be mute. Now, here comes the miracle. Here comes the miracle. Hallelujah. And if you, you believe God for a miracle today, if you believe that God is able to do the impossible, I just need somebody to write down. I need you to lift your hands up and say, God, I believe in my miracle. Oh, glory be to God. Oh, better yet, better yet, I believe in my sister's miracle. I believe in my brother's miracle. I believe in miracles. Now, here comes the miracle. Elizabeth become pregnant. Hallelujah. And the Bible said she stayed uh, in seclusion for five months. Now, that was a miracle even for her to become pregnant. Hallelujah. But God... Uh, will keep his word, people of God. God will keep his word. He spoke the word. He spoke it to Mary. He told Mary what to expect when she sees Elizabeth. Oh, yeah. Glory be to God. He told Mary what to expect when she stepped on the ground where Elizabeth lives. Hallelujah. And God will keep his word. For he is able to do exceeding abundantly above all that we ask or think according to the power. That working it up. Stop putting God on your level. Stop putting God on man's level. One thing about God, whatever he says, he will bring it to pass. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. I feel like getting up right now if, 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 if somebody can follow me with the camera. Hallelujah. I feel like there's cut the step right now because let me tell you something. God is a God of the impossible. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. God is a God of the impossible. So here she become pregnant. And then at the sixth month, God began to deal with her cousin Mary. Now look at this. Hallelujah. The Bible says that told Mary, your, 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 your relative Elizabeth, what he was telling, uh, 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 saying to um, Mary, I know what I'm saying to you sounds impossible. But guess what? Well, on the other side, I'm working another miracle. On the other side, I'm working something that, that, that seemed impossible. So I need you to be encouraged and know, Mary, that what I've done for her, I'm going to do for you. And mothers, I want to encourage you today. What he's done for others, he's going to do it for you. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that... God allowed Elizabeth, hallelujah, to be pregnant. And God allowed Mary to go and find Elizabeth. The Bible says that when Mary greeted Elizabeth, the Bible says that Elizabeth was filled with the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah. And she began to speak the word. And she said, blessed among women are you. And blessed is the fruit of your womb. She said, how did it happen for me that God will send, hallelujah, the mother of my Lord to come and see about me? Hallelujah. She didn't even feel worthy of Mary's visit. Let me tell you something, people of God. I don't care, hallelujah, I don't care who you are, I don't care what you've done, but let me tell you, when God, when God loves you and, and he loves us all, but when God has a blessing in store for you, he's going to come right where you're at. But you got to come to a level of faith and you got to you got to come to the place where you're not going to allow nothing, no giant, anything to stand in your way. 
You got to come to the place, hallelujah, where you know that your God is able. And so the Bible says that, that when Mary got there, there was, there was joy. Hallelujah. There was a joy. Now, let me just go back. Let me just go back. There was no jealousy there. Like, in other words, Elizabeth didn't say, well, Lord, I'm older than Mary, but Mary's a young girl. Why didn't you allow me to bring forth? Mm. But there was no jealousy. I want you to know that the impossible may have happened for someone else. The impossible may have happened for uh, 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 your sister or your brother. But let me just say this. You don't have to be jealous of somebody else's time. Time is, oh my God, it's nothing like God's time. When your time comes, no devil in hell can stop it. But guess what? Your time is not like any other time. Your blessing is not like any other blessing. Your miracle is not like any other miracle. Don't compare your time and your breakthrough with someone else's. That's right. The Bible says, now this is what I love. And I'm going to move on because I don't want to hold you. The Bible says that when they met, right, the baby leaped. I'm telling you here today that it's something about when you go to, you, you're next to a person that believes in God and y'all both about to break forth, because I'm here to prophesy here today that many of you are about to break forth, something is going to leap in your spirit. Hallelujah. Because, why? Because when, when it leaps, it, it, it says, hallelujah, I believe in God like you believe in God. And your miracle you believe in God for, I believe in God for my miracle too. Hallelujah. In other words, God has done the impossible for both of us. Whereof we are glad. We are glad. Hallelujah. I really need to lift your hands up. I need you to lift your hands up and say, we are glad. We are glad. I am glad. Hallelujah. And so the Bible says that when he told Mary, he said, I'm telling you what I'm about to do for you. I've already, uh, your cousin already. Hallelujah. She, 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 uh, it, 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 uh, she's pregnant and she's with a child. Hallelujah. And I'm here to tell you, uh, God will do it. Now listen, God kept her husband silent, Elizabeth's husband, kept him silent. But when the miracle happened, Hallelujah. It was not until he called the blessing out by name. Uh, in other words, he had to call his son's name out. Hallelujah. He had to say, he, first, he, he wrote it on a tablet. That's what it was. He wrote it on a tablet, and he wrote his son's name. I'm here to tell you, when your miracle comes. Wait, let me go back. Let me go back. Let me go back. When he wrote his son's name on a tablet. The Bible says that that is when his mouth opened up and he began, he was able to give praise. I'm here to tell you when your miracle happens and when God do the impossible, you need to write it down and declare it in the atmosphere. Because don't apologize for your miracle. Don't apologize for you taking down what has held you back. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Mary had to worry about embarrassment. Mary had to worry about the people. Elizabeth had to worry. She had to worry about people saying she was barren. But God came in and they went past that, that giant. They went past, oh God, what society was saying. They went past, amen, what medical science was saying. They went past it. And the Bible says, hallelujah, that they experienced uh, their miracle. Look at God. God allowed Elizabeth to bring forth the forerunner of the Messiah. Higher. And God allowed Mary to bring forth, oh, God, our Savior, Jesus. Glory be to God. I, I hear God saying, hallelujah, that sometimes your miracle is connected to another miracle. Sometimes what God is about to do in your life, that impossible, let me tell you, is not just for you, but it's for somebody else. And sometimes that miracle, oh, oh, oh my God, I, I don't know if this is the right message, because see, this is the message I should be standing up and running. Huh? 
struggle. That's why the enemy is fighting your faith. That's why he is challenging you. Because it's not just about you. Hallelujah. The impossible that he's about to perform in your life is connected to the, another generation. Uh, the, the impossible, the miracle that he's about to break forth in your life is connected to your son and your daughter. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Glory be to God. I just need somebody to give him praise. I need somebody to give him praise. God, God, we love you. God, we glorify you. God, we glorify you. Call out your miracle. When God brings forth a miracle, don't apologize for your miracle. Don't apologize. Hi. Don't apologize for what you waited on. Remember, Elizabeth couldn't have any children. The Bible said that she rejoiced. <laughs> she rejoiced. I'm telling you today that what you couldn't have and God allowed it to be, don't apologize for it. But rejoice and give him praise. And then when he do it, you declare the impossible. Let it be known among the people what God has done. Tell your testimony. Hallelujah. Here God told uh, Zechariah, told him in the temple, the angel spoke to him and says, you will name him John. It was not until he wrote on the tablet, John is when God opened his mouth and he will be he was able to talk again. What is God saying? That sometimes God do have us in a place where we just cannot mention because sometimes we have messed it up. Sometimes we may get in the wrong ears. Ears of influence that, that may cause us, you know, to say, okay, you know, maybe they, maybe they are talking, maybe they are making sense. So God will have you silent. But when you open up your mouth and tell you to declare it, you declare it because nobody know like you know. Uh, nobody know the, the, the torment you've been through. Nobody know. Can you imagine Elizabeth being buried and an old woman? Can you imagine what other women said to her? Can you imagine uh, what was said to her husband? Can you imagine? I remember when we were going through it. Yeah, yeah, we were struggling. And some people would tell us, why don't you just give up? Why don't you sell? Why don't you do that? Why don't you do this? But we held on. And at times in my life, it was embarrassing to the point I couldn't share a lot of things because it was uncomfortable. And God, I'm going to tell you this, God had my mouth shut. He did. On certain things, he had me silent. And I believe, I believe now I understand he had me silent because he wanted to fulfill. Feel um, uh, the miracle, glory be to God, and he didn't want no interruptions. And sometimes, as women, and sometimes as mothers, we talk too much. Mm -hmm. We just gotta tell somebody. I just gotta. I feel you be like, I feel the power of God. I gotta tell somebody. No, sometimes you just gotta tell Jesus and keep it, keep it closed. Mm -hmm. Because there's some things you don't quite understand in the puzzle. There's some pieces that God is bringing together you don't quite understand. So if we stay silent when God directs us, hallelujah, he's putting the pieces together. When we open up our mouths, it is together. It is together. It is together. Hallelujah. And, and I watch God, if I could give a testimony, and I'm going to let you go. I watch God work miracles in our lives. My husband's life, my, my life, both our lives, my children's lives. I watch God, even in the church and ministry, I watch God work miracles in the families that are connected here. I watch God do it. But sometimes, amen, if we're going to talk doubt, sometimes it's good to keep our mouths closed and say, God, increase my faith. God, increase my faith. God, increase my faith. Because faith is what moves God. Mm -hmm. Faith will move the giant. Faith, amen, will bring you over the bridge. 
Faith will take you through the water. Faith, I have glory be to God, will take you through the fire. Faith. Faith. Hallelujah. And I want to encourage you today that the impossible still happens. Oh, yes. Some of us have been blessed even to, uh, during this pandemic. And, and, and though many have lost jobs, but God is yet still providing. And even in this situation that seems impossible, God is still working. I want you to know, people of God, God's hand is in this. God's hand is on us. God's hand is in. Amen. This season is working in this season. God has not forgotten you. Hallelujah. And I just need you to turn somebody if they're in your house with you, if they sit next to you, amen, your hubby, amen, your mom and your sibling, your children, and turn to them, amen, and let them know that God has not forgotten you. Your situation may seem hopeless. And you may be saying today, what am I going to do? How is I going to make it? I'm here to encourage you today that our God is faithful. I am glory be to God. Hallelujah. For he is our everlasting strength. And God, watch this, he is the God of all resources. He is the source, but he is the God of all resources. So even when some resources somewhat closes up, right? And back up, remember who you believe. You believe in the God, amen, that is the source, which means when one resource, back up, right? When one resource close up, that's when God brings in another resource. I mean, I've watched God bring a man from the West when I was expecting a miracle from the East. I'm telling you, people of God, Trust God. <clears throat> Believe in God. Know that he's able. Amen? Know that he's able. Now, if you're, you're uh, sitting, you may be standing, I just, just want you to just lift your hands with me. Hallelujah. And just worship him. Just worship the Lord. For he is worthy of the praise. Ah, glory. Hallelujah. God, we love you. We praise you. We magnify you. We stand on your word. Hey, God, we stand on your word. We stand on your word. There is none like you, God. There is none like you. Hallelujah. 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 What can we learn from, from them? What can we learn from these women? Amen. That we can learn from them. That we can learn that they, they trust God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And that they fought through uh, obstacles, right? Um, they, they fought through stigmas, all right? Like Elizabeth, okay? Hallelujah. Glory be to God. They uh, fought, right, through criticism. Mm -hmm. I'm telling you, when you are waiting on the impossible, when you're waiting on your miracle, you got to understand there's going to be a whole lot of noise in the air, and there's going to be a whole lot of critics, but you got to stand on the word of God. Uh, I believe it was a scripture, and I just want to read this and, and, and let you go. I believe uh, the scripture that says, Amen, 38. Uh, 37 and 38, it says, For with God, nothing shall be impossible. Hallelujah. And Mary said, Behold, the handmaid of the Lord, be it unto me according to thy word. And the angel departed from her. So I'm saying what we can learn is that when, when Mary heard the confirmation, and when she realized that the miracle that God performed on her, God was doing, amen, something similar with her cousin, she spoke the word and she said, Lord, I receive your word. And I'm here to tell you that one thing we can learn is that we can take the posture of believing the word of God to the point where we declare it and we speak it 
Amen. And we call it out in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Are you excited today? Hallelujah. Mothers, just know that God has not forgotten you. He has not forgotten about you. Amen. You are powerful. You are beautiful. Keep believing God for what seems uh, impossible. They told us, they told us, amen, Faith Tabernacle, they told my husband and I, we will not be able, amen, to build the house of God. They told us, they, not only did they tell us, but we didn't have the resources. Uh, and you know, money answers all things. So, so it's almost like, okay, they, they told you, but did you have it? No, we didn't have it. But we watched God Amen. We watch God bring resources from the east and from the west and from the south and from the north. I'm telling you, people of God, God wants us to declare it, even if you don't see it. That's what faith is. Faith is the substance of things hoped for, Hebrews 11 and 1, and the evidence of things not seen. Even when you don't see it, speak it. Even when you don't know it, declare it. Even when you don't feel it. Don't look for a feeling, honey, because faith is not a feeling. Mm -hmm. No, no, no. Uh, even when you don't feel it, declare it, declare it, and speak it. In Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. You may not know the Lord today. You may say, Pastor, I, I don't know the Lord. And I, I want to accept him as Savior. Because you talked about a God of the impossible. That there's nothing impossible with him. So what, what seems like they can't move. Hallelujah. But it can move with God. I want to know who he is. Hallelujah. I want to receive him and accept him as Savior. I want to tell you today, he died for you. Hallelujah. His blood was shed on Calvary for you. And we thank God for the shedding of his blood. Because, you know, with his, the shedding of the blood, there's remission of sins. And we thank God, you know, for the shedding. And I want to encourage you today that, to know that if you confess your sins, right? He's faithful and just to forgive us of, your, uh, of our sins. Forgive you of your sins. And to cleanse from all unrighteousness. Every day I ask the Lord to forgive me. Every day I ask the Lord to work on me. So I encourage you today that do not know the Lord. Know that I don't care what you've done in life. And you may say, well, as a mother, I don't feel I've done all. We all don't feel like we've done all. Hallelujah. You know, I don't know the Lord. Hallelujah. I want to take to you today, the Lord loves you. He died for you. And once you confess your sins, and once you ask God to, to forgive you of your sins, don't you know you're a new creature at that moment? Or shall I say at this moment, the moment, this moment, the moment that you say, Lord, forgive me of my sins, cleanse me from all unrighteousness, don't you know that at this, at that moment or this moment, you're forgiven and you're a new creature. So just repeat after me. If you want to give your life to the Lord, God, we thank you. Lord, I acknowledge that I am a sinner. And Lord, that I need you. I need you, Lord. Lord, I need you to come into my life and to cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I believe that you died for me. I believe you was resurrected for me. Lord, and I believe that you are Lord. And God, I ask you to forgive me of all of my sins. Wash me. Make me new. In Jesus' name, amen. Now lift your hands and say, Lord, I thank you for saving me. You are saved. You are a believer. You are born again. God bless you, saints of God. Hallelujah. Wait, wait. I forgot. Amen. Well, not forgot, but I don't want to run ahead. Let us give God a praise for those that have received the Lord Jesus Christ. God, we praise you. God, we magnify you. God, we glorify you. Lord, you are worthy. You are worthy. We thank you for the souls. We thank you, Taya. Oh, God, we thank you even now in Jesus' name. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. 
Hallelujah. I just want to speak a word to someone that's listening to me today. You have been sitting around and you've been wondering how you're going to make it through this and what's going to be after. But I'm here to let you know that God is preparing you for your next. And I hear the Lord say it. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. To posture. In other words, position yourself and prepare yourself for your miracle. God is going to send. Hallelujah. God is going to send a miracle your way. And your God is going to shift your perception. Hallelujah. And he's going to bring you to a place where you've never been. Be encouraged, people of God. Saints of God, be encouraged. Know that I love you. Happy Mother's Day again to all the mothers. I love you. I love you. Pray for me while I pray for you. God bless you. See you next week.